if you had internet access and even the tiniest, most fleeting interest in anime at any point during the 2000s, then odds are you had an account on Gaia Online at some point. In the late 2000s, this... hmm... What I can only describe is anime-flavored social media platform had hundreds of thousands of users logging in on a daily basis. And the crown jewel of Gaia was its forums, which were second only to Yahoo in terms of their popularity, and I know that doesn't really sound like a big deal in 2019, but believe me, back then, that was huge. As a matter of fact, it was such a big deal that even Time ranked it among the 50 best websites. But in 2019, it's, uh... Oh god, how can I put this politely? Uh, on a good day, Gaia looks like a ghost town, but on a bad day, it's a case study for economists and public relations students who want to see what a train wreck looks like in their field. <laughs> like legit, no joke, things went so off the rails on Gaia that it's even mentioned in a textbook by the MIT press. So what happened to this anime-centric social media platform from yesteryear? How do you go from being listed in Time's top 50 websites to being a literal textbook example of an economy that's lost control. Let me tell you all about it. The site that we now know as Gaia Online was launched back in 2003. A group of roommates wanted to make an online community hub for anime fans, and so Go Gaia was born. But within only a couple of years, their little anime community hub would be a really big award-winning website, and in 2004 it would be renamed Gaia Online. The way Gaia worked is like this. You make an account and you have a customizable avatar. To get new items to customize your avatar, you need to buy them in the shops in the user-run marketplace with the site's currency called Gaia Gold. To get Gaia Gold, you would do things like play games, post in the forums, exploring towns, and as you may have noticed, all of these things don't just generate gold, but also social interactions. So yeah, it's a pretty simple formula Gaia had going on. Simple, but effective. And there were other things you could do on Gaia too, of course, you know, there were things like customizable cars and aquariums, there were guilds, and perhaps the most well-known other feature that Gaia had was an MMO called ZoMG. And as some of you may recall, Gaia was actually one of a small handful of avatar-based social networks and games that came out in the early 2000s. As a matter of fact, Second Life and IMVU both came out within a year of Gaia. So then, what did Gaia have that they didn't? What set Gaia apart from its competition? Two things. Forums and anime. When Go Gaia was founded back in 2003, anime in the Western world was experiencing a massive boom in popularity. Things like Toonami, Pokemon, Sailor Moon, all the manga that was finally getting released in English, it was all creating more English-speaking anime fans than there had ever been before. And all these new anime fans needed a spot to congregate online where they could just talk and learn more about anime with their fellow fans. And so Go Gaia was born with the intent to fill that void with anime-related resources links, forums, and role-playing with these fun little avatars that you could dress up like anime characters or your OCs. And there was nothing quite like this on the internet at the time. It was honestly pretty impressive. But of course, having a cool new site like Gaia around does zero good if nobody else knows about it. So how did Gaia's founders get the word out? Well, <laughs> they honestly didn't do a whole lot to advertise the site in its early days, or to be more specific, they didn't need to because the site got a lot of growth a lot faster than any of its founders ever anticipated. But either way, let me tell you real quick about Gaia's impressively bare-bones advertising, because honestly, it's nothing short of a miracle that this worked out as well as it did. So get this. Four months after their launch, they gave away postcards at two anime conventions. Then they put an ad in a comic book. And then... Uh... Oh, wait, that's it. That was literally it. The rest of the site's growth came completely from word-of-mouth advertising. Now, I don't doubt that advertising directly to their target audience at a couple of anime conventions was pretty effective, but I don't think it would have been effective enough to get Gaia the growth it got. Or, at the very least, not by itself. Whoever was preaching the good word of Go Gaia back in those first few months was probably doing a better job of marketing the site than Gaia's founders were, in all honesty. Like, for real, word-of-mouth advertising is honestly one of the hardest and most unreliable forms of advertising to effectively utilize because you basically have no control over it. But of course, when it works well, it works incredibly well, and for Gaia, it worked out a lot better than they ever could have imagined, which I think speaks volumes about how much its earliest users loved the site. 
site. In fact, one of the site's founders, Derek Liu, once said in an interview, quote, We never anticipated big growth. We only knew that the community would be a lot of fun, and our goal had been to make the forum as entertaining as possible. It's in that same interview that he talks about the transition Gaia was making in 2004 to be less of an anime link list and more of an anime-flavored social gaming and networking site. So, in other words, the site's social aspects, like the forums and the avatars, were now going to take center stage. To that end, they'd rename the site Gaia Online, and they'd totally revamp it with new features like guilds and friends lists. To quote Liu from the same interview, Currently, all our ideas revolve around role-playing. Gaia will be as much of a game as it is a forum. And of course, the changes to the site were all very well received. By 2007, Gaia was a full-fledged social networking and gaming site, and getting more than 300,000 unique daily logins on a daily basis. And as if that wasn't enough, the average visit to Gaia lasted about two hours, and there was an average of 64,000 users on at any given time of day. In fact, Gaia's user base was getting so massive that it became one of the first sites to integrate what we would now call social media marketing. Gaia hosted official campaigns for things like Alice in Wonderland, Skittles, and perhaps most infamously, yes, there was an official campaign to promote B-Movie. And what makes this all the more impressive is that these campaigns were actually super successful, way more so than similar campaigns on Gaia's competitors. But of course, all this is to say that during the 2000s, Gaia was considered a very major platform. Its users knew it, marketers knew it, other social media platforms and games knew it, and then when Time ranked it in the 50 best websites in 2008, the world knew it. This was, by all means, the golden age of Gaia. But of course, alas, not all that glitters is Gaia gold, and behind the scenes of Gaia's golden age, the groundwork was being laid for an economic crisis so bad that, and I cannot stress this enough, it would land this site with equipable yaoi paddles and Naruto headbands into an MIT Press textbook on economics. To fully grasp just how awful the economy in Gaia would eventually become, first we need to understand Gaia's relationship with real-life money. The first encounter Gaia's economy had with real-life money would have been in the site's infancy in June of 2003. Do you remember what I told you earlier about how in Gaia's early days its user base was getting super huge super fast? Well, believe me, that didn't come without a literal price, namely that it was getting more expensive to upkeep the servers and other maintenance costs. And since this was just all happening so fast, Gaia had no choice but to turn to its users for help by asking them for donations. And ultimately, it all worked out, of course, the site was maintained, and the users who donated were thanked with a new and super exclusive item called the Angelic Halo. And it's worth noting that, at the time, they had no idea that they would be thanked with an item, let alone a new and exclusive one. The Angelic Halo was a surprise thank you gift from Gaia to its donors, and it was given after the donations had already been accepted. So what this means is, if you wanted an Angelic Halo, but you didn't donate, then the only other way to get one was by buying it from someone who did donate through the site's marketplace. And since Angelic Halos were so exclusive, their price got pretty high pretty fast. Now let's keep a pin in that for now, and let's talk about the next encounter Gaia had with real life money. With the Angelic Halo, Gaia established the financial system that would help keep them afloat for the next couple of years. They started selling monthly collectibles. Actually, uh, fun fact, up until October of 2006, they were called donation items, but they changed the name to monthly collectibles because because it caused some confusion that Gaia was a charity, which of course it isn't. But back to the topic at hand, in July of 2003, the new collectible items were the panda and grizzly hats, and this time users knew that they could get the items by donating. And thus, one of Gaia's longest lasting income sources was born. The way it worked was, every month from that point onward, or at the very least until March of 2017 when they would get rebranded, Gaia would come out with some cool collectible items that you could only get in these envelopes. And the only way to get an envelope outside of hoping that someone put one on the marketplace was by paying $2.50 for them. And by $2.50, I actually mean $2.50. You could send the payment via PayPal, via your old flip phone, or you could even snail mail them the $2.50 because, you know, the early 2000s. <laughs> and of course, just like the Angelic Halo, prices for these monthly collectibles tended to get pretty high pretty fast after they were cycled out, since you could only buy them through Gaia during the month that they came out. After that, your only hope to get them was 
through the site's marketplace, and the marketplace, I'd like to remind you, had prices that were completely dictated by the site's users. And you know, you don't exactly need a degree in economics to understand the basic principle of supply and demand. <laughs> by 2007, it was pretty much impossible for your average user to obtain the older monthly collectible items because their prices were just getting absurdly high. Unless you were particularly lucky or active, the site's typical gold gathering methods like posting in the forums, playing games, and visiting towns and all that could only net you one, maybe 2,000 gold a day. Now, more recent monthly collectibles, these were a little more obtainable. They were usually sold for a couple of tens of thousands of Gaia gold, but then there's the older monthly collectibles like the Angelic Halo and the Panda Hat, and they would routinely be sold for hundreds of thousands and even millions of gold. It's around this same time that some users took to selling their Gaia items on eBay for real money rather than Gaia gold. Since eBay doesn't have an archive system, it's kind of hard to say just how frequently this was happening and how much money these sellers were making, but we do know at the very least that Gaia was more than aware of it. I mean, <laughs> in early 2007, it'd be pretty hard for them not to be aware of it. After all, someone would have just sold an angelic halo for, drumroll please, <laughs> $6,000 USD. Oh, does that sound like a big number? Well, guess what? I know a way of making it even bigger. If we adjust that for inflation, that's about seven and a half grand in 2018. In an article for, uh, I'm honestly not sure how to pronounce this, I'm sorry, but in a 2007 article titled Move Over My Space, Gaia Online is here, Sherman would say about this transaction, wonderful to tell you, but bad for what we're trying to accomplish. Gaia knew something had to be done. And sure enough, in July of 2007, something was indeed done. I've got a plan so cunning you could put a tail on it and call it a weasel. <laughs> Gaia introduced a new form of currency called Gaia Cash. You could get it by spending real world money and you could use it to buy items like that month's collectible envelopes, evolving items, and a couple other good miscellaneous items from the brand new cash shop. Now, the good news is Gaia seemed to immediately realize the danger they could be putting their economy in by introducing a new and much more obtainable form of currency like this. Only a month after Gaia Cash was implemented, Gaia hired two economists to help keep the site's economy in check and prevent inflation. And this actually worked out pretty well. They introduced taxes into the marketplace and they were actually able to successfully fight off inflation, or at least for now. Despite Gaia's efforts, Gaia Cash did still have one fatal flaw, you couldn't use it in the marketplace. That was still Gaia Gold only, and this would end up causing Gaia a lot of economic problems down the road. But before I tell you about how Gaia addressed these problems, let's go ahead and take a look at what was happening behind the scenes. From 2006 to 2010, Craig Sherman was the site's CEO, and as we've seen, Sherman always seemed really cautious in dealing with Gaia's economy. And because of that, Gaia's economy actually remained pretty stable for a while. But then in 2009, a new problem was starting to make itself known on Gaia, and that was a declining active user base. The dawn of the new decade was kind of a weird time for Gaia, because on one hand they were making upwards of a million dollars a month thanks to the installation of Gaia Cash, but then on the other hand, for the first time in the site's life, they're starting to see a noticeable decline in its active user base. There's no single big reason why this decline was happening, it was more like a salad of small and medium reasons, like the site's novelty wearing off on its aging user base, new competitors like Facebook and Tumblr gaining relevance, frustration with Gaia Cash, few to no updates on the site's unique features, you know, stuff like that. It was just all starting to pile up. But the bottom line here is that in 2009, interest in Gaia was starting to go down, and this wasn't just dangerous for site management, but also for Gaia's economy. Let me paint you a picture. If you decide that you want to stop using Gaia, but you have a rare item, maybe even multiple rare items, one of two things is going to happen. Either you don't give it away and it lessens the amount of something that's already in short supply, or alternatively, you host a giveaway for your items. And enough leaving users chose option two in the early 2010s that it started to cause mild but manageable inflation. All you really need to know is that around this time, inflation is starting to creep into the Gaian economy again. But of course, the site's economy had been kept pretty stable for a while now, so Gaia's higher-ups were more preoccupied with figuring out why people were leaving and how they could get them to stay. And ultimately, Gary Schofield was made the new CEO in March of 2013. This was effectively the beginning of the end for Gaia.
they say you can tell a lot about what kind of a CEO someone's going to be based on their first major action with the new title. So what was the first major thing Schofield did once he was sitting on Gaia's big boy chair? Maybe something to help incentivize old users to come back? Promoting new signups? Or hey, maybe something to help the site's economy before that manageable inflation becomes unmanageable? <laughs> no. He fired more than 20 of Gaia's best staff members. And in response, many of its remaining staff members resigned. A lot of them would end up leaving scathing reviews of their employment at Gaia, and I'm telling you this because a lot of these reviews are eerily prophetic of the problems that were about to start plaguing Gaia, which I think just goes to prove how apparent it was even from this early on that Gaia would be having a lot of problems under its new management. Like, seriously, listen to this one. It used to be great, but new execs are destroying culture and morale. New executives seem disingenuous, patronizing, and disconnected. Employee benefits and privileges are slowly being stripped away. Morale is currently at an all-time low. We are losing valued co-workers weekly. So, now that Schofield's already made himself super disliked by Gaia's employees, what's his next course of action? Simple. Making himself super disliked by Gaia's user base. The first thing he did to supposedly help Gaia's economy was introducing personalized sales into Gaia. The idea was that through private messaging, Gaia users would get access to sales that were tailored to their interests, and this sounds fine on paper, right? Well, in practice, it consisted of Gaia users getting the same three messages every day nagging them to buy Gaia Cash. Gaia users got so annoyed by this that they tried reporting the admin account that was sending them for spam, and the site feedback forum was full of complaints about this. As a matter of fact, there's a massive sticky thread about this that survives, and it has almost 400 pages worth of replies where users do nothing but talk about how annoyed they are by it. So, yeah, needless to say, these sales were extremely unpopular. On June 23rd, after only five days of conducting these sales, they were totally discontinued. And as many took note of, although they were definitely being discontinued due to the large volume of complaints, the announcement saying that they were going away is noticeably absent of any mention of the criticism it received. Hmm. Interesting. But gee whiz, if Gaia can't send a constant stream of personal messages to its users to buy Gaia Cash, then good golly, how is it ever gonna nag them to buy Gaia Cash? If only there was some kind of announcement system it could abuse. Oh, wait. On June 28th, Gaia hosted a summer sale for cash items, one that sold the angelic halo for the equivalent of a grand, which is, of course, a horrible thing to do for a long list of reasons. But I'm telling you about this because up until this point, Gaia had never sent more than one site-wide announcement per day, but from this point forward, the site would make increasingly more announcements on a daily basis, and when you have an unread announcement, the notification sticks until you read it. And before this, announcements were generally, well, proper announcements. You know, sometimes they would be about sales, but sometimes they would be about new items, new additions to the site, changes that were being made, you know, stuff like that. But now, important announcements were getting buried by sales and reminders to buy Gaia Cash, and by buried, I really really do mean buried. There's a thread from June of 2014 that counted more than 3,000 announcements relating to Gaia Cash in only 11 months. That is absurd! The way Gaia's new management wanted to run the site wasn't just abundantly clear, but it was even being spammed to its user base multiple times a day. And as though to prove that, Gaia was about to release its most dangerous item as a cash exclusive. It's the item that's responsible for propelling Gaia's economy for from inflation to hyperinflation, and it's an item called Flynn's Booty. So what is it? What does it do? What makes this so awful? Well, it's a gold generator. You'd buy it for 99 Gaia Cash, and then it would spit gold right back out at you. The amount you'd get was random, but there's a thread from shortly after the item came out that documents that users were getting anywhere from 50,000 to 10 million gold. Oh, and by the way, is now a good time to remind you that 99 Gaia Cash was equal to a dollar? One singular US dollar, and that one of the most common ways of getting Gaia Cash was by buying it on gift cards for 10 and 25 dollars at a time? Yeah, that might be worth mentioning. Now, Flynn's booty wasn't the first time Gaia had brought a gold generating item onto the site, and unfortunately, it wouldn't be the last either. In fact, it'd be quite the opposite. It's after the release of Flynn's booty that Gaia started to release new gold generators regularly. But what made this one in particular so different? Or more specifically, what made Flynn's booty so economically dangerous? 
dangerous. Well, before Flynn's booty, the only other gold generators that came out were in 2008. There were three of them. They were called the Bag of Wind, Bag of Wind 2, and Gold Gold Revolution Wheel. Right off the bat, what sets these apart from Flynn's booty is that they're not just gold generators. In the Bag of Wind, there was a chance that you'd get an item instead. But even if you did get a lot of gold out of either of these, or if you picked the gold wheel, one, their maximum gold output was nowhere near the output of Flynn's booty. And two, they were being cautiously released into a much safer economy than 2013's Gaia. But 2008's staff at the time still knew that if they didn't pull the plug on these items quick enough, that they could have dangerous repercussions for the site's economy. As a matter of fact, there's a journal entry by one of the site's economists at the time that goes into a lot more detail on this. So basically what I'm saying is 2008 Gaia released its gold generators as a very cautious economic experiment. They saw that they were dangerous, recorded why it was dangerous, and stopped making them. 2013 Gaia, on the other hand, feeling confident as ever, said in an FAQ promoting Flynn's booty that, quote, it is not predicted to have any long-term negative effect on the economy. What a surprise. That's the distinct tang of a liar. Flynn's booty's economic effect was literally immediate. There is a surviving graph that shows just how much gold was being spent in the Gaia marketplace per day since November of 2012 through September of 2013. And you might notice that the spot when Flynn's booty came out is marked, not that it really needs to be because the spikes are pretty apparent. According to a paper called The Gold Rush by Nicole Chan, it's thanks to the release of Flynn's booty and the other gold generators that were to regularly come out after it that marketplace gold Gold revenue increased from 10 billion to 3 trillion in five months. And I know it's really tempting to think that those numbers sound absurd and hyperbolic, but the thing is that they're not. There's also a thread on Reddit that tracked how bad inflation on Gaia got around this time, and it shows that Red Ink, for example, had been worth 500 gold at the beginning of 2013. In October, it was worth 1400 gold. And then by March of 2014, it was 30,000 Gaia gold. In just that year, its price had gone up 150,000%, and it would still somehow get worse. By August of 2014, red ink would cost a staggering 25 million gold. In case my point hasn't gotten across yet, let me say it plainly. Gaia was now experiencing full-blown hyperinflation. Now, hyperinflation is pretty hard not to notice, you know, especially when you're using this site on a daily basis, and the site's users weren't happy about it at all. But what about Gaia's higher-ups? How were they feeling about this whole thing? Well, apparently pretty good, because in September, Gaia's then-COO, Jason Loya, held a now-infamous presentation on gamification where he encourages entrepreneurs to sugarcoat a bitter pill and tells them that the holy grail of gamification is addiction. And as bad as all this stuff already sounds on its own, when you put it into context with the economic problems Gaia was having at the time, which is really hard not to do, by the way, since one of the slides has an image of Flynn's booty, then it really paints a picture of someone who just doesn't care about his site's user base. As a matter of fact, he seems to consider them, in his own words, lab rats. You know what really matters to me? Booty. Booty. Someone leaked the images of him giving the presentation in October, and it immediately blew up. Users were, rightfully so, furious, and there was a massive call for his resignation and the discontinuation of Flynn's booty. And so, how did Gaia respond to this? On October 16th, only 10 days after the images were leaked, users began to notice that threads that mentioned Schofield or Loya by name were getting quietly removed. And then on the next day, Gaia announced that they were discontinuing its Ask the Admins threads, which were a kind of weekly feedback thread where users could ask the admins about the stuff that was going on. So, in other words, Gaia responded by silencing its users. The official reason the threads were discontinued was because of a growing volume of questions and the help needed in the threads and a lack of resources, which was, uh, kinda true, you know, it's true in a way, but it neglects to mention why they were getting an increased volume of questions. It neglects to mention Schofield or Loya. Because, you know, of course it does. But this wouldn't stop users from talking about them, no. Instead, they just gave Schofield the nickname of Goldemort and referred to him that way instead. But yet again, they were silenced in December when Gaia made amendments to its terms of service that literally prevented users from criticizing Gaia or its employees by name or by nickname. 
game. And right before that, they added an amendment that stated that they didn't have to tell Gaia users that it was adding amendments to its terms of service. Does that sound like an incredibly scummy thing to do, by the way? Yeah, that's because it is. Both Gaia's morale and economy were at their absolute worst. As a matter of fact, the economy in particular was getting so awful that this is it. This is finally when Gaia would become a textbook example of an economy that's gone off the rails. In May of 2014, the MIT Press published Virtual Economies Design and Analysis by Vili Ladonvirta and Edward Castronova. And sure enough, the sorry state of Gaia's economy is mentioned. And you know, speaking of the sorry state of Gaia's economy, uh, how's it doing in 2014? Ha! Trick question. You and I both know that it was abysmal, but I think the whole textbook thing actually kind of bugged Gaia, or at the very least it made it apparent to them that the site's economic problems wouldn't go away if they just ignored them, which had kind of been their approach to it up until this point. Well, drastic times call for drastic measures, so Gaia was about to do something extreme. They were, get this, about to listen to its users. Oh my god, imagine that. They sent out a user feedback survey in July, and the results of this survey have never been publicly released, but seeing as how there was a temporary stop in gold generator sales shortly after the survey was sent, I think it's pretty easy to make guesses. I'll tell you what makes it even easier to make guesses is that a user run survey was made just a couple of months later and its results were publicly revealed. As I'm sure you can easily guess, it was bad news for Gaia. Back in 2007, Gaia's absolute wealthiest users were a very small number of millionaires. Meanwhile, in 2014, of the 490 people who took this survey, 67% had more than a billion gold and yet 83% felt that they didn't have enough gold. Almost 100% knew inflation was a problem on Gaia and they weren't exactly feeling optimistic about Gaia's willingness to do much of anything about it. Oh, <laughs> and if you think those numbers are absurd, you haven't even heard anything yet. One Gaia user by the name of Zandi made a thread in which they noted that marketplace sales had been starting to plateau at 300 trillion gold in sales per day. 300 trillion per day in 2014. And maybe it's because Gaia's economy was starting to hit such unheard of extremes that at long last, the staff finally addressed it. Kind of. The Ask the Admins threads were finally brought back under a new name in October of 2014. Now they were called Ask the Staff. And in the very first post, in the very first thread, they explicitly mentioned that they were aware of the inflation issues on Gaia. I mean... <sighs> Better late than never, right? Well, in this case, maybe not. They ended their paragraph about inflation by saying that they wanted their economy to work in tandem with gold generators, which completely defeats the whole point. And at this point, it was pretty well known that gold generators were eating the economy alive, but no matter how many users knew it, no matter how many admins knew it, Gaia's decision makers just didn't care. You remember how that review earlier called Gaia's new management disconnected? Yeah, that definitely definitely turned out to be the truth. Gaia's decline at this point is all too clear, and 2015 and 16 would end up being comparatively quiet years for Gaia, and I don't doubt that that has a lot to do with the prominent censorship across the site, the poor morale, and of course, steadily falling traffic. In any case, economic problems persisted. Gaia Cash was introduced into the marketplace in 2015, but it didn't have any long-lasting effect. In fact, many users just saw it as another gold generation method since the seller received gold instead of cash. Furthermore, even though Gaia started limiting the number of gold generators that could be sold, the fact of the matter is that they were still being sold and they weren't being limited enough to do much of anything to fix the damage that they'd already done. Case in point, by 2015, gold generators that could spit out at least a trillion gold were pretty normal. Another feedback survey revealed the increasing frustration with the gold generators and inflation, but as Gaia's new general manager at the time stated, if gold generators are no longer sold, it would mean we would have a harder time hitting our daily and monthly goals. With goals not being hit, cuts will need to be made either in art, features, or updates to the site. With all the ongoing problems Gaia was having at this time, this was no doubt the worst time to be on Gaia, but at long last, after watching Gaia burn itself alive for 
four years, the community was, at long last, given the good news that it had been waiting for. In December of 2016, Shuffield and Loya were finally no longer in charge of Gaia. In fact, more importantly, not only were they leaving their positions at Gaia, but this allowed a group of three of the site's original creators and artists to take the wheel again, effectively putting Gaia under new old management. And guess what? The new old management, get this, actually cared about the state of the website. In fact, the new old leadership wasted no time in fixing the economy. The last gold generator to have been sold was the gold truffle box in January of 2017. In August of the same year, they introduced the site's new currency, Gaia Platinum, which would be exchanged at a rate of 10 million gold per one platinum. For now, at least, the site's economy still seems pretty stable. The year is currently 2019. Gaia's current Alexa ranking is 49.64 in the States and 21.976 overall. It's pretty lucky to see more than a few thousands of users on at any given time. Its days of attracting hundreds of thousands of users per day are long gone. That being said, Gaia's community is a lot smaller now, but it is still there. If you want to watch a good video about what Gaia is looking like these days, just as a user, then I'd highly recommend Billiam's video on it. Fun in fact, it actually inspired this video. But of course, this isn't all to say that Gaia's problems have all magically been solved and things are all fine and dandy on there now because frankly, that's not the case. To list off just some of the more well-known problems, for starters, a lack of traffic continues to be a really big problem. And then there's the discontinuation of Flash in 2020, which could mean that a lot of Gaia's games and features are gonna have to be removed or at the very least reworked and who knows how long that's gonna take. And then perhaps the most infamous struggle Gaia has had recently were their financial problems toward the end of 2018. They resulted in Gaia needing to yet again ask its users for help, as well as a large number of layoffs. The future of Gaia Online, or whether or not it even has a future at this point, honestly seems pretty unclear. In any case, I hope I was able to answer all your questions about the decline of Gaia Online. Making this video was a really weird trip down memory lane for me, because Gaia used to be my social media platform of choice back in my early and mid-teen years, and I had no idea up until I was working on this video that things got so bad on there, because I left around 2011-ish. In any case, if you still have any more questions, feel more than free to ask in the comments, where hopefully either I or someone else can get to you. And on that note, uh... Actually, tell you what, here's a fun little fact that I couldn't find a good spot for in the video. So, one of the main items people will use to track inflation on Gaia is the emo bag. This is done partially because it's in the aforementioned group of items in that Reddit post that tracked Gaia's inflation, and partially because there was a pretty popular quest thread by a user called Moldy Lunchbox who had been saving up for one in 2008. This therefore gives us a really good timeline of the emo bag's price, and that's why it's such a common example for showcasing just how bad inflation on Gaia got. But incidentally, that user who started the thread, Moldy Lunchbox, she would soon be known to the internet as Boxy, and I don't doubt that there's a lot of you who are too young to remember her, but suffice to say she was, uh, quite a meme <laughs> back in the day, and many of her earliest videos actually mentioned Gaia. But, um, a, a lot of people don't know me as Moldy Lunchbox. And, um, so, yeah, that's my Gaia username on Gaia Online. So Boxy's not just an iconic meme from yesteryear, but it's thanks to her that we can track inflation for the emo bags so much more effectively than we can other items. Small world we live in, huh? A thank you and shout out to, and I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing this right, Verlorian Hoff on Know Your Meme, who documented most of the information about the fall of Gaia that I mentioned during this video. I'll link to it in the description because the amount of research they must have put into this is incredible. P.S. Watch Symphogear.